Hey guys, thought it was uh, time to make one of these videos updates. I just had no voice, so I couldn't do it earlier. Um, came down with COVID, so finally got my voice back today after a few days. Um, let's take a look at the markets. It does not look good. Um, the bottom's not in, but it doesn't mean that we can't get a short-term bounce here. So I'll go over Bitcoin, ETH, Sol, and two shit coins. Um, to be honest, I'm not looking at anything else. Um, this month and next month are going to be pretty, pretty rough. And um, I'm actually going to be gone um, half of September. So basically, after the 15th of September through uh, half of October, I will be gone. It is going to be my... I'm getting married and my honeymoon, so I will not be having access to Discord or any calls or any charts or anything. So um, I will not be answering any DMs. I will not be answering any Discord messages, nothing. Um, so I'm going to make this video and probably maybe a, a, a couple of other ones before I leave. And basically, this one's going to be your macro update. Okay. Um, we'll start with Bitcoin here. And... I'm going to turn this into a line chart, okay? Now, if we take a look at market structure, right? Ever And I'm going to make this clear for everyone, okay? The bull run started once this was taken out. So for those that are asking, when is the bull run? When is the bull run? The bull run happened at 25K, okay? Once we broke that, we have been in the bull run. We were up 3x from the lows, okay? For those that are asking, when is alt season? When is alt season? Um, well, think about it. From these lows here, most of the coins did 5 to 6x, okay? We t I, I, I've covered this before in a video. A lot of these coins already did the multiple x's, okay? Um you're not going to get an alt season where you're expecting, you know, 10 to 15 X. Like it, that's, that's out of the question. Um, I think that the bull run is about 50 to 60% over. I think the bull run ends max Q2, maybe early Q1 or mid Q1, but I don't think things actually start running until end of Q3 or, um, you know, beginning of Q4. It's going to be choppy until then. I think we have a little bit more downside to go. And these are my thoughts. Okay, so the bull run started here 25k, right? This is when we actually started making higher highs. Okay, here's a double bottom higher low. Okay, actually this is your higher high, higher low. All right, higher high, higher low. Here is your higher high. Here is your higher low. Okay, and at this point, we are still on a macro structure. I'm going to draw this. Okay, here's your trend line. So this is your structure on a high time frame. We can come all the way down here to 40K and still be bullish on a higher time frame. All right. Now, if we take a look at these impulses here, we actually have broken market structure and we are making a down trend. So if this was your last higher low, and I only look at candle bodies. Those that use candle wicks are incorrect. Okay, um, candle bodies is where it matters, and this is why I turn the line charts on. Because if you take a look, if I go back to a candle chart, you see how we have the wicks below, right? That's not wicks do not indicate market structure. Okay, so if we go back to line charts, okay, over here we have a lower high. Over here, we have a lower low, right? Over here, we have a lower low. This is actually lower than this. Sorry, this is lower than this point. And if we take a look at this, right? <clears throat> then we have a lower low, and then we have a lower high, all right? So this is a clear downtrend. You know, I don't know why people thought we were bullish and i'm going to go back to a candle chart here but this not only is a downtrend but if we take a look at even this impulse here right if we are taking a look at like here is now in a market structure you can have many impulses right like here is 
one of the impulses that I was talking about, this uptrend, we can come back down here to around 40K, 44K, and still put in a macro bullish um, uptrend, okay? But here, we're, we're bearish, all right? Now, if we take a look at this, okay, we're making a series of lower lows, lower highs on this impulse. Here was your last lower high. We broke out. We made another higher low here, right? Went again, higher low here. And then we had another market structure break where the daily put in a lower low, then put in a lower high, and then now we have a lower low. We most likely go up to put another lower high and then continue the downtrend until theoretically, right, followed by lower highs, you have lower lows, right? So if this is your higher high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, Theoretically, we should go down to put in another lower low. It doesn't mean it has to happen, but that's what I'm looking at in this, you know, instance for for uh, at least Bitcoin. Okay. Now, if I were to go back to a candle chart here, all right, I'm gonna remove all of the. Actually, I just want to. All right. I want to keep these here, okay? So first things first, if we were looking at our range, okay, here is your range low level, and we are basically on it right now. This is your range low support or demand zone, okay? Okay. Here is your range high. So this is just a typical range play. All right. Now, we are not showing any strength here, but there's no reason to short on a support level. Okay. Um, this is your little support zone. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Do I think this bounce, I mean, people are going to say like, oh, hey, we're coming back down here, possibly putting in another uh, higher low and then going up, come back down and something like that. That's possible. right? I just don't see it that way. Now, if we take a look at this level here. Okay, this is a little demand zone. And if we were taking longs, that would be the only place that I would take longs. Around 58, 150-ish. Stops would be, you know, somewhere around 56K. And I'm looking for a push up to maybe like 62. 62 first, actually. If we get this, okay, it's going to be another higher low. If I get 58, the first area I'm taking profit at is going to be the previous range low. Okay. And then I will add more to my position if we do something like this where we are able to flip it into support. I will add more to my position and I'm targeting this area here. Then this area here. Okay. Why these areas? Well, one very, very crucial point that we held as support. We lost, this becomes an SR point. And then we also have a little supply zone here that I'm definitely looking to short. If we are getting to it, stop losses will be high. I'm looking for a further move down at that point. And uh, this one is gonna be a scalp long, okay? Not risking anything more than 2% or 3% per trade on either one of these. And at that point, I am looking for a move down to one of two areas. One would be this daily demand zone, okay, from 53. And why this area? Okay, we see previously that it was support briefly in this area. We lost it, turned it into resistance, broke out, right, and again, turning it into a little, right, turning it into support once we broke out from it, 
And then this is the first area of interest that I'm looking for to look into adding to my long-term bags. Okay, lose that area. We go to the weekly chart. We have a weekly demand zone here at 40 to 44K, which lines up with our next area of interest for this um, trend line touch. All right. Now, if we lose that area, turn into resistance, this bull market is 100% over. Okay. Because at that point, we have lost um, high time frame structure. So if that happens, then at that point, like I'm, I'm walking away from the cycle. And for those that do not know, this bull cycle is my last cycle. I've been through um, three bull cycles. This is my third bull cycle, and I've been through two bear cycles. So once the cycle is over, I am calling it quits um, all over. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, all discords, I will be calling quits. Um, so if that happens, that is me walking away. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, what I think is going to happen is we hopefully feel this, go back up, have a harsher rejection. I would love to get deeper bids into this demand zone around 40, 44 K. If this happens, this would be probably either during elections, a little bit after elections. Um, and then, you know, from uh, after elections going into Q1, I think we just see a move up to like 83, 85K. Um, my max target for this bull run is probably like 96 to 100K. Um, you know, I'm not going to give targets. I don't believe in giving targets. Those that give targets are always going to be a target because, you know, people are going to be upset that a certain level didn't hit. Now, um, for that to happen, right? Your alts are not going to move until Bitcoin breaks above its all-time highs and then does some consolidating, let alts catch up. But until then, alts are going to have a very hard time to catch up. And my comment and a lot of discords um, have panicked people. And, and I, I'm just a realist. I will give you things that people will not tell you. But to be honest, a lot of coins have topped. Um, a lot of coins will not see their all-time highs from last cycle. Last cycle being the last bull run. Link is not going to see 50 plus dollars, right? Um, Sol will see all-time highs, but there's going to be a lot of coins that will not see its last cycle highs. Uh, a lot of coins actually put in this cycle highs, right? Now, let me explain why that is really briefly. I also made a video about this last time, so please go ahead and watch that somewhere on my channel. So... If we take a look at a lot of coins, this first leg up of the previous cycle is when a lot of coins made their all-time highs. Okay, so I'm just going to grab one really quickly as an example. Let's use this. I'm going to use, for example, Link. Okay. So this first leg up here, all right, let's say we start from... December of 20, okay, and I'm going to stop at April of 21, okay, so here's December of 20, and here's April, May of 21, all right, link went to about 53 bucks, all right, now look at this, we come back down to July of 21, and then Bitcoin starts making its move to all-time highs, right? We went higher than this previous 64K and we stopped at 60, you know, 9K ish, right? Now look at Link. Link came back down to July. And then once we went to what was the date? November of 21. Here is November of 21. Link did not make its all time high. All right. We are looking around the same exact pattern here. During this leg up from 25 to 73K, a lot of coins, let's take a look at Link. Okay. So, timestamp 25, February 23rd of 23. So, let's do here. Okay. Here. Link went from, even let's do the lows, right? Four to. 22. Okay. What is that? Almost a, you know, 6x. 
right? Almost about a 5x. Here's the lows, right? The big Bitcoin did about 3x, Link did about whatever. Now, <clears throat> if we're taking that same exact leg up for a previous cycle, right? That second leg up, Link is, I don't think Link is going to get to like even $33, all right? Maybe it, it clears like 20-ish one more time, but it's going to be very hard. It's definitely not going to get to $53, okay? Um, maybe it does like a 2x from here. Maybe it, if, if you're lucky, um, um, a, a you know 2.5x, but it's not going to get to its all-time highs. I don't even think it's going to get to its uh, you know second highs from the last move up. Okay, and I can keep going and examples on a lot of these coins, but if we get a move down here, right, all it's going to take a deeper, deeper um, plunge further down. I'll go over that. That's because of Bitcoin dominance. But if we take a look at, actually, let's take a look at it now. Okay. Bitcoin dominance here was resistance, and this is a three-day chart. But if we take a look, previous resistance, we broke out. We flipped it to support over here. We lost it. Rejection, rejection, rejection. The more we touch resistance, the weaker it's going to be. We're clearly in an uptrend on Bitcoin dominance. We flipped it to support. The next resistance doesn't come until 60 to 61% percent and I honestly think we can get that now imagine the smell on the streets and the markets if we get that okay if Bitcoin dominance has just been rising ever since alts have been taking a huge dip okay if this continues to go that alts are going to die right and again, I'm not scaring you. I'm helping you make your informed decisions on what you want to do with your portfolios because people are not going to tell you to sell. I'm not going to tell you to sell. I'm going to tell you when I trim my bags because I'm not taking a loss further down. I'm not a bag holder. I have no emotions to my coins, and you need to apply the same exact thought process to your coins. Are you okay with your coins going down? Are you a long-term investor holding for two to three years? If so, intraday price actions should not affect your decisions. If you are a trader, taking losses, getting in lower is up to you. Um, so just be informed of those decisions. When they come, you have to make, okay? Now, if we go there, then alts are going to suffer. I'll go over an uh, example of Seoul when I cover it and where I think Seoul is going. But I think this is still bullish. We also have a bullish engulfing three-day candle. Um, so I think this goes a little bit higher. But taking a look at um, the meme chart that everyone likes to freaking talk about, which means absolutely nothing, the CME gap, okay, <clears throat> so we had a gap, right, we had a gap, we, we closed CME at 62, uh, 945, we have a gap at 60.8 down to uh, 58.7, now when the market opens, this gap will be about like, I think we came down to here, this gap will be about like, um, This much filled so we're going to open up the candle here on monday okay and then we are going to have a gap around this to whatever it opens okay that gap is going to be open i think we push up and we clear it um now if this comes back down do we put in a low a higher low and then continue to go grind up for me i don't think so per se um, and then we continue to go further down now I've made a statement in discords and I will stick to it. I don't think any presidential candidate cares about Bitcoin, will help Bitcoin. I think crypto will do what it does without the help of both idiots on both sides, right? And I think we go higher um, regardless. Now, like I said, most of the altcoins will be top. So you have to choose your coins um, you know, carefully. Now... Back to Bitcoin. <clears throat> One sec, which chart was it? Okay. So I think 
anything to 68, you know, 0 0.2 is a long, and we long to run 62K, 64K, uh, 64.6K. Previous mid-range, still having trouble of flipping that into support. I think that is a short, um, and at that point, you know, we're going to be putting in another lower high. Okay. That's more confluence. Right, the longer this takes, the longer it's going to add up into our area of um, of short interest. Um, stops will be around 67.1, and then I'm looking for a plunge down. So that's what I'm looking for on Bitcoin. Um, you know, don't be surprised if we get a capitulation move. Now I haven't seen a capitulation wick yet. When you see it, it's going to be like this. Okay, it's going to have a move down. The wick is going to be gnarly. We could get that anytime soon. If we do get that, I think it's it's time for a short-term reversal. Uh, buyers should step in. If you see that wick, um, like we happen to have it here, see how we reverse back up. We had it here. We slowly reverse back up. We had it here, right? Slowly reverse back up. So if we do have that again, um, I think you will buy the dip and you look to start take profits short-term. Um, now, this is a market where you are going to be a scalper for the time being. Um, swing trades are going to be hard to take. Uh, longs on spot are going to be hard to give. So if you are going to be taking profit, it should be done fast. All right. Now we could, like I mentioned, we can easily bounce over here and then a target, you know, a move up back to um, 64k. That's probably looking to short. Okay. Now let's take a look at ETH. All right, ETH is at a very crucial level here. We are at range lows, okay? Now, support is holding, but it's getting weaker and weaker with every single touch. Um, this is a logical place to take profit, or sorry, um, take profit if you're shorting, okay? But this is not a point of uh, short at support, okay? Now, if we take a look at the four hour, by the way, my trigger to long this is the swing low level. Okay. I am looking for a sweep of this level to reclaim, put in a swing failure, and then I will long once the candle closes back above on the daily. Stops below whatever wick created to take out the swing low, and I will target back. first this SR point and if we're ever gracious to get this then then I'm taking that okay but again just like Bitcoin this is putting in okay this is your last um, higher low okay lower high lower low all right, but again, on a different impulse, this is your lower high, this is your lower high, maybe it comes back down here, uh, up here again, puts another lower high. So this is your range currently, right? Range lows, and this is your current range. I mean, you have a higher range high here, but this is your point of resistance. We have a supply zone here. Okay, so taking shorts here makes sense. Draw a little downtrend as well, right? So it all makes sense to take shorts in this area. Um, stops around 3,400-ish. Now, if we flip this 30, if we flip basically like, you know, let's go to a lower time frame. Okay, here is 31. See how it held as support. Now it's resistance. Well, now it's an SR point. If we are able to, and the only long that I will take is a sweep of these lows, or reclaim, put in a deviation, this will also be, okay, 
reclaim, put in a deviation, reclaim the support, okay, and then I will long TPs along the way, and then stops. I need more price action to develop before placing stops, but that is my trigger too long on ETH. Reclaim the support area, turn into, um, well, reclaim it first, and then flip it into support. I will long stop somewhere here, and then target one, target two, and then target three. Okay, I'm also opening up a head short at the same exact supply zone that I talked about. Okay, and I'm targeting, you know, if price goes up, great, I'm making money. If, you know, I'm, I'm basically net, you know, break even. Okay, because I'm opening a, a, a hedge, one-to-one -one hedge. Um, so I will, all, I will stop, hold this to stop while this continues to go up, make money one way or the other. If this stops, this continues to go up, I make money there. If, you know, uh, this comes back down, my short fills, we're going further down, I make money regardless somewhere. But these are the three options that I have for ETH, okay? So if I were to draw fibs from this high to this low, okay? The DCA point of this short also does come at the golden pocket FIB, which is also resistance here, okay? So entry at the bottom of the SR point, DCA around 3,300-ish, um, 3, okay? Should bring your average up to around 3,250, stops around 34, and then you're looking for a move down. That's what I'm looking for on ETH. Um, I'm not bullish on ETH until we claim and break this level. This could possibly be a little double bottom pattern here. But if we break above this and hold, then I'm targeting new highs on ETH. Until then, no. Okay. Um, let's take a look at Sol. Now, Sol is the troubled child. Okay. <clears throat> now, Seoul, and this is one that I gave to my students. Remember, uh, we spoke about a swing failure. I spoke about it in my channel. We took out the highs, closed below, and that was a reversal sign. Okay, This took out the highs and the liquidity and had a reversal to the downside. Okay, Now, this is a very important tint. Order block to hold. We bounced right from it. All right. We actually did break structure here as well. This was covered in the Discord, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Went up to make a higher high. Failed to bounce from here. Made a lower low, and then we just continued to die from that point. Um, so if I'm looking for shorts on Seoul, this is where I'm looking to start my shorts. We have a supply zone. Okay, basically anything from 160 up until 177, maybe even 190. Um, you know, I, I would now a lot of people do not know how to hold shorts uh, on the way up. Okay you have to go in light and DCA heavier, okay? Or you just have one entry, very, very small entry, and then if the not blindly entering in on shorts, let's say we enter in a short here, a small one, and you have to be mindful of your liquidation price, okay? If we go back up, now if we start making another rejection here, put in a lower high, then you can add more to your position, add more to your position once it's confirmed, add more down, brings your average up to like there, and then you have your stop loss above the lower high that's created, and then target a move down to around $100 to $75. Where do I get that level? First, let me give you the short setup that I'm taking. Now, a lot of you should not take this because a lot of you do not understand how to take this short, but this is the setup that I'm taking, okay? 
Entry will be around 160. I'm not going to give this in the Discord because, like I said, a lot of people do not understand how to take the short and will liquidate themselves. This is more for the experienced traders. We open up a small position here. My liquidation price is probably going to be around $600. Okay, so I'm not worried about that. If we continue to go higher and higher, we have room to DCA, but I'm not going to be blindly DCAing. Like I said, we go back up. My first DCA or my first uh, points of um, interest to add is a rejection at this point here. Okay, this would also be the neckline of the head and shoulders. Reject from there. I'm looking to add to my position, which would bring my average up to around like 169 ish. Okay, we go back down. Okay, if we go back down below 160 again at that point. I will add more to my position, bringing my average a little bit lower to 164. And then I'm managing my risk by lowering my stop loss to the highs, the lower high that's created. And then I'm just targeting it down. That goes from a 1.7 R to around a 4.5 R. All right, that's how I'm looking to short um, starting around 160, which is the supply zone. All right now, we may not get that, but if we do up, if we do go up from here, if we do push up, that's where I'm looking to short. Now, taking a look at the daily, okay, everyone's eyeing this region here, okay, previous rejection, we flipped it to support, bounce, 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 this is getting weaker and weaker. Now, if we think logically for a second, okay, Bitcoin yesterday, or around 70k was at 196-ish, right, 195, whatever, okay. 27% drop, where Bitcoin only dropped 14%. Now, if I am thinking that we are going to get this 53 to 50K level, let's say we drop another 15%, okay? If we drop another 15%, let's do, let's just take the same exact drawdown, okay? We get to around $90, okay? We were at 62K yesterday or 61.8K, whatever it was, and Seoul was at 153. Today, it got down to 140. That's a $14 drop on a 1.5K drop for Bitcoin. If we do some math, right, let's say we go down 7K, so 1.5 times, or 7 divided by 1.5, you get about almost 5. That's a, you know, $50 drop. Okay, lines up again perfectly with my area of buys. Now, I'm not playing fractals here, but that's just logical. This is an area where we should have bounced, and we did. Okay, 120 might provide another bounce. So, again, if we are going to take that long at 120 or 121-ish, stops are going to be very, very tight around like 118. And you're looking for a quick, quick bounce. Okay, TPs would be, shit, um, maybe like 126 and 133 for about a 4.5 hour trade. <coughs> you take this with like reduced position size, so probably half of normal allocation um, because lose this, then there's a whole bunch of liquidity to, to, to grab this wick down there. Okay, this wick. Um, and here is a demand zone, All right? But I don't think we get that. I don't think it's generous. I mean, if shit, if, if we're generous to get that, then that's where you fucking buy. But basically, okay, here down to here, this is the levels that I gave in the Discord are going to be your buy zones, okay? All right, um, like I said, push up there, uh, long. I'm not gonna be longing here. Maybe if I do, it's gonna be a scalp play with a very tight stop loss. Um, but if we get capitulation, I think it's gonna be a nasty wick just like that. This was a daily $30 wick 
Okay, this one here as well was like a $25 wick. Um, and I think we'll get the same exact thing um, if, you know, uh, we have some, some news with um, Iran and Israel and whatever is happening on in the Middle East right now. All right, so be very cautious if you are leverage trading. Um, weekend price action, I do not really care about. Okay. Um, we do have a supply zone on the one hour here. Okay, so a possible short scalp can be taken. Now this lines up perfectly with another uh, touch of our downtrend. Very, very tight stop. Now if we get 150 to 155, I will be selling my spot bags that I gave in the Discord a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be de-risking a little bit. I'm not saying all of it. Um, and then I will sell the majority of it around 165 to 175 if we get it. But this would be a short scalp attempt. Okay. Um, entry very light. DCA somewhere around 153. Stops above uh, 155.4. And then you're looking for a move down. Okay. Now, be careful shorting here. Um, basically, I'm personally not going to short. I'm not taking this short, but I know there's a lot of degens here. Okay. So, the reason why I'm not shorting is we had a huge sell off. All right. So, theoretically, like when we are oversold like this, we do have one giant bounce up that could take a course of, you know, a few days to weeks. But shorting after a move down like this is, is mental. All right. So just be careful if you are shorting, especially right now. All right. Now my greatest joy in seeing this downfall is seeing the destruction of these retarded memes across this whole entire space. All right. Um, I hate anything that comes out of soul. I have uh, absolutely everything against the soul community. I think they're, um, you know, the worst community in all of crypto. Now, this chart, you're looking at it, you're like, well, this chart looks very bad, right? Like, there's no lows here. Well, let me introduce you to Deck Screener and this chart, okay? Now, how low can this go? Very much lower, right? Here's our support around $1.48. And then we really do not have another support until 48 cents, all right? At least another another strong one, because like maybe we have, you can say we have, let's go to a lower time frame. Okay, maybe we have one at a dollar ten, but honestly, let's flip this chart around. I mean, this has already broken market structure. We put another lower high. Theoretically, we go down to put another lower low. But if we flip this chart, okay, we actually have a little cup and handle forming, okay, and if we take theoretical targets, now, sorry, not theoretical, we take technical targets, okay, we should go down to where this coin belongs in the negatives. No, I'm kidding. Um, but this doesn't look good. Okay. We have multiple touches of the support. So any bounce on this is a short for me. Now we can go to a lower time frame where I'm looking to short this coin if we get it. Let me remove this. The reason why I don't do low cap coins, the reason why I don't do these meme coins is because they're all garbage. Okay. If Sol goes back up to that 160, 170, this is where I'm looking to short. I hate that I don't have my favorites here. Where the fuck are you? Okay, there you are. Okay, so I'm looking to short uh, $1.88 if we get it. I don't think we will. And then all the way down to a dollar ten cents. Otherwise, we lose a dollar forty eight. Whatever. We lose a dollar forty eight, which is the support area. 
okay? And then I am looking for a move down. Uh, once we lose that level, turn into resistance. Let's go back to trading view because I like to draw here. But, oh my god. Okay, it's a little bit, uh, the, the levels are a little bit different on trading view. Close below this, turn into resistance, and then I will take a short with my stops above here. If we reclaim it and turn into support, I will go ahead and cut my short, and then I will reshort at the indicated level that I gave around a dollar eighty-eight with stops above two hundred three. Okay, so dog coins, soul meme coins, they had the run, they are over. Do I think this is the top for them? Probably not. Like maybe you can get like a nice generational entry for this, but this is pretty much done. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be it basically. If you take a look at USDT dominance here as well. Now I was looking for this rejection here. Okay. This actually flipped this resistance into support. This looks like it wants to go higher. Next supply zone isn't until basically 6 to about 6.11, okay? If this continues to go up, then we are going to go much higher. A bullish USDT dominance is bearish for the markets. So if this continues, like, like I said, like it just put in, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high maybe a higher low, and this is going to be, if I mean, if we go up here, if we continue to grind up from this point on, right, this would send us down to that like 58, 56k level for Bitcoin, and then we have that move down, send a little um, hopium in the markets, get people bullish again, and then have that huge move down. Probably take out these highs and then just die from there up until Q1, Q2, when the market's, you know, uh, top, and then um, take it from there. But now this is just, you know, a, a rough drawing. I, I need more uh, price action to, de to develop to give a more clear um, view on this, but this is still holding up an uptrend, hasn't lost it yet, which sucks because the dollar looks like shit. Dollar has lost a lot of value, but it just sucks that we're not going up when this looks like shit. So there's a lot of things going on, especially with this war news. Um, right now, you know, if you are not allocated, okay, if you are itching for a trade, just be patient. Preserve your capital in, in times of, uh, un, of indecision, okay, because um, you don't want to just make irrational decisions. So be patient. Easier times will come. Wait for a trend to form. Right now, the trend is down. So if you are looking for plays, look for high time frame shorts, low time frame longs with lower position. And until that switches, where we have an uptrend forming, um, it's not time to go into easy mode right now. All right. So I'll leave it at that. Have a good weekend, everyone.